This is the 19th video of the video series of orbital mechanics of Python. This one, I'm going to be going over solar radiation pressure theory. So solar radiation, all it is, is just light being emitted from the sun, and light in the form of photons are going to collide with your spacecraft. And even though photons don't have any mass, they still actually carry momentum. And this does not follow Newtonian mechanics, because in Newtonian mechanics, you learn that momentum equals mass times velocity. So from that, you would assume that photons don't have any momentum because they have no mass, but it's actually not true. They do have momentum, and you have to go into relativity to figure out why. So I found a good source on this. Uh, this comes from a particle accelerator lab in Germany. Uh, they basically go over kind of how this makes sense in the relativistic way. They go over relativistic mass. They first start with P equals mv. As you would know, momentum equals mass times velocity. Kind of go through the whole explanation of what happens where E equals mc squared is involved. So Albert Einstein is actually involved in this. But what you get out of it, and I'll post a link to this because I'm not a physics guy, so I, I don't know it nearly as well as they would. So I'll, I'll leave it to them to kind of teach it to you. I'll, I'll leave a link. But what's important here is that these momenta, or these photons actually do have momentum. So E energy equals P momentum times C, the speed of light. So then you, from this, you can solve the momentum of a photon equals E over C. So that's what it is. And then the energy of the photon is also dependent on its uh, frequency because all a photon is is just ele electromagnetic radiation that has some sort of frequency. So, from that, we get that photons collide with objects and impart momentum onto them. So, that's exactly kind of what I said. Whenever you have, you learn kind of in other physics that two objects, they have a certain amount of momentum, they collide. And from the momentum, you can know what the result of that collision is going to be. The change in momentum of each. Uh, so, this actually just has a little application of comets. So, the reason that comets look the way they do, why they have those tails, is because of solar radiation pressure. And I'm going to post a link to this as well, but this also kind of goes over what is happening. So basically the comets are just a big ball of ice, if you put it simply, and the heat from the sun evaporates that, and then the solar radiation pressure pushes it behind, which is why you see the trail. And they go all over uh, what's going on here. You can see this equation, just like in the last one, P equals E over C. Um, and they go through all this kind of solar radiation pressure and how it affects the comets. So it's kind of a fun application there. So next is the geometry, just like the n-body. Um, Perturbations is we're going to need to know this geometry, and that's why I went through the whole um, ordeal of going through the splice files. Um, so some vectors that we need here is we're going to need to know uh, the vector that's pointing from the sun to the spacecraft, which we can call R sun to SC, uh, which, which we're going to calculate. And then what we have is uh, the vector pointing from the sun to the central body, and we're going to get that from splice files. And this is different than in the end body, because in the end body, it was from central body to the end body, and this one is from the sun to the earth which I'll show you how to do in the spice files in the next video. Um, this I have it in this way because this is the way I have it in software because I don't actually um, create a new variable called R sun to CV, but this is how you can think of it. It's just the vector pointing from the sun to the central body. And then we already have this R, it's part of the state variable. And as far as calculating this R sun to SC, same thing as just vector addition, where you start from the sun, you have this vector, which you already have from spice files. And then from that vector, you add your state vector, that is your um, state position vector, and then from that, tip to tail ends up in this R sun to SC, so that one's pretty simple. And then, of course, we're going to need the acceleration equation to get the dynamics of this, so for this, I got a paper from NASA. Um, I've used this before, orbital mechanics around small asteroids, where solar radiation pressure really affects you. I won't do it, I'll do an example of, kind of, um, orbital mechanics around asteroids later, but um, from this, uh, we get the uh, equation, the acceleration equation, um, where this is the magnitude of the acceleration, and we already have the, the direction. We already got that from the previous uh, geometry, so now we need the magnitude. So this is what it is, it's this beta value over d squared, where beta equals one plus rho uh, over g1, which I'll explain what it is, or one plus rho times g1 over b. So g1 is kind of just this this uh, this number, basically, just this coefficient uh, with these really weird units that end up has everything worked out. I, I'll post a link to this paper as well to kind of explain it because all we need to know is what we get from it, which is going to be the magnitude. Um, and yeah, it has some really weird units, but it all works out. Uh, B is a spacecraft mass to area ratio because if you think about it, the more surface area you have that's pointing towards the sun, the more photons that are going to hit you, which is the more momentum they're going to impart on you, which is a bigger perturbation. And then rho is the reflectance of the spacecraft, which matters because if you can think about it, the more reflective that your spacecraft is, the more the change of momentum that the photons have when they collide with you. Because if the photons were just to collide and get absorbed, they go from whatever velocity they have, c, the speed of light, to zero. But 
when they get completely refracted. So when you get it totally absorbed, that's a black body. But if you have a white body, which gets completely refracted, the velocity of the photon goes from C in one direction to C right back in the other direction. So it changes velocity by twice the magnitude, which is why this is here. So it depends how reflective whatever part, whatever part of the spacecraft the photons are hitting. Um, and for what we call a cannon, cannonball model, you can just assume a constant surface area with respect to the sun. But if you want to get really deep into it, and then you also want to take into account attitude, which I'll do much later, um, this is going to change so you can have it as part of your state variable. But for now, we can just have some constant value that we can assume. And then D, this last one, is the distance between the sun and the small body, where small body for us is central body, where in this example, he's doing asteroids. Um, just a distance in that uh, kilometer. So you can see it goes by the square. So the farther you're away, um, by the square, the uh, magnitude of the SRP will decrease. So yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that's what I have on solar radiation pressure. Um, the next one, obviously, I'm just going to get to how it goes in the orbit propagator and then give just some Earth example cases. As I said, later on, I'll do... Um, once I'm done with orbit propagator, I'll do just more, um, I'll do some asteroid orbits because th those are actually pretty interesting and they're much different. But for now, I'm just going to stick to Earth orbit cases. Yeah, so that's it for this video. Uh, let me know anything usual, too slow, too fast, and thank you for watching.